PGA Tour Champions Learning Center. Brought to you by Tour Edge Exotics. Hi, welcome to Learning Center. I'm Vince Cellini, so glad you are with us. And our guest has won 21 times on PGA Tour and PGA Tour Champions. Really one of the great guys in the game who has a special skill he's going to share with you. Lauren Roberts is with us. Hi, Lauren. How are you? Great, mate. Thanks for having me on, Vince. Oh, thanks for being yeah. here. So, yeah. so what's it been like here this uh, this past few months for you? What have you been up to? Well, I, you know, <laughs> I've been out hitting balls and practicing. You know, they really never really shut golf courses down, other than this, the the protocols of how you played and all that. So, uh, I've been able to get out and and practice some and by myself and everything. But um, it's been a little tough, you know, because I I love to be around kids. We have some good junior players around here that are trying to come up. So it's, you know, it's tough not being around other kids, but uh, it's been pretty good, really. And we want to tell folks you're in the Memphis area, right? Yes, yeah, okay. I live in Memphis. All right, so uh, let's let's get right to it. Uh, golf has one universal issue for every player, no matter what the level, yeah. and that is making more putts. So yeah. we have we have gone to the source here, uh, the man. <laughs> whose nickname yeah. is the Boss of the Moss. By the way, have you trademarked Boss of the Moss? You know, I looked at doing it several years ago, and uh, I was like, I've done it. That's a little expensive to do all that. You know, so I, <laughs> <laughs> that was several years ago. You know, it's a little expensive to do all that. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's a nickname, so I was just happy. I have to put a shout-out to David Ogren because he gave me that nickname years ago, and it, it was pretty hilarious how it happened. So yeah, tell us, tell the folks who don't know how that came about. Well, I was just, I was up at the U.S. Open in '94 Oakmont, and I just got out and I shot 64 on Saturday to get right in the hunt. And I mean, I made, I made so many, I made so many 20 footers. It was amazing. And uh, so I was in talking to the media guys in the locker room uh, about it, and Ogren just walks by. And says, "Oh, boss of the moss, you know." <laughs> and one of the guys put it in the article, and it stuck, you know. So, which is pretty good because you know you can get some bad nicknames out there if you're not careful. <laughs> man, man, you're not kidding. You know, you, you could have been Lumpy Roberts or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been because that's what I am now. I'm on the Champions Tour, you know. <laughs> no, no offense, no offense to Tim Heron, who we who we love. <laughs> no, no um, offense. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, you know, you, you kind of came to the game by today's standards relatively late, right? You were a teenager when you uh, you, you took up yeah. the game. Yeah, I didn't start playing until I – really seriously until I was a junior in high school. I went out right. to the golf team, and I, and I wasn't very good and stuff. And so played for a couple of years in college, and they got rid of the golf team. And so then I was, you know, picking the range and, and, and working the bag room at the local club in my hometown in California. And the pro just – Hey, I need a new assistant. Are you interested? And I said, sure. So I, you know, became an assistant pro and I really came up through the PGA program that way, going to the business schools and doing all that and putting my time in. But I kept practicing while I was there working on my game. And, you know, I, I just remember just sending in my entry form for the qualifying school and take off the week before and go tee it up, you know? Wow. <laughs> so, so that's the way I got out there, and I got made it in the fall of '80, uh, the qualified school there, when there were two schools a year. So uh, that was kind of it, how I got out there. Wow. Now, yeah. uh, but in order to get there, you did have to hone those putting skills. And I yeah. wonder if you could share with our audience uh, the man who was very influential in in your career and teaching you and helping you with uh, with that particular putting skill. With, with my putting skill, uh, there was a gentleman who was uh, the pro emeritus at San Luis Bay Inn, which is another golf course out in California. His name was Olin Ducha, 32 U.S. Open, 34 PGA champion, I believe. I think it was the uh, it was PGA no, 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 champion and U.S. Open. Yeah, yeah, 34 and then, yeah, yeah. Two-time major winner. He's, yes, he's yes, a sir. a great guy. And uh, he would took a liking to me and, and uh, would tell me to come out and, you know, I'm going to play nine this afternoon when you want to come out and play with me. And, uh, you know, of course, I'd come home from school I thought dad I gotta have a car I gotta go out and play with Oler you know so uh, <laughs> I go out and play with him and he talked about putting and um he talked about my wrist position and and the stroke and of course you know he had an old you know hickory shafted putter with an old uh, head on it and, and 
he putted you know, kind of like get that shaft working and and you know release it and and all that but uh and he's the one that really kind of got me on, on on the putting and, and but he told me what works for you got to figure out what works for you what you can do but he said the big thing is about speed control and so that's where i kind of focused my game on on putting was all about speed control and when you know when i do clinics or i'm in pro ams and guys ask me about putting you know i, I always tell them the first thing i said well the whole key to putting is being able to control your speed because if you can't control your speed how are you going to pick the line you know how do you know what line to hit it on if you're if you're not controlling your speed so you need to develop a consistent stroke that you know how to control your speed. And, and that was always the number one key for me. That's what Olin always taught me about. Yeah, you were, I, I had read that you're more of a speed than a line guy because you see right. so many amateurs leave putts woefully short. And they don't even get yeah. it there or give themselves a chance. By the way, yeah. Olin Dutro was the, uh, I, I read the first California native to win the U.S. Open. So he's, yeah. he's a legend out in the golden, the golden. He, he, he was, he was a legend. Uh, and I just, Love hanging around him. It was we had a great time. Yeah, you can yeah. learn a lot, that's for sure. And yeah, obviously you did. So let's get to yes. what's your edge presented by Tour Edge Exotics. And uh, again, your putting shines. You were number one in putting average on PGA Tour in '94, that great year. Mm -hmm. You got your yeah. and then yeah. on PGA Tour champions in '06 and '07. And um, you talked a little bit about technique. Is putting is it like fingerprints? Is it that individual, or is there some tried and true method? That can, can that you can get through if if you're just you're an amateur player who wants to get better just putting the ball. Well, you know I, I there are different ways to putt just like there are different ways to swing. You know there's so many teachers now and, and there's different methods and stuff. But I the, the the putting stroke to me is like your golf swing and to me it depends on how you see things. Um. Okay, if if go back to another all-time greatest putters, Ben Crenshaw. Okay, if you watch the way he played, he was a right-to-left player. You know, obviously he had a nice rotational swing and released that club, and he played right-to-left. I don't care if it was a driver or a wedge; it was going to have a little right-to-left motion on it. Now you looked at his putting stroke. You know, we used to, we used to call it open gate back in those days. Now it's arc. You know, and so he he let he lets that putter that kind of come back, comes a little inside, the toe opens up, and he... Could I interrupt you, Lauren? Lauren, could I interrupt yeah. you? Would you mind Would you mind just standing for that part when you're showing the hand motion of the putter? Sure. Just give yeah. us a better look, and then we'll come back and sit down. Right right about... Uh, okay. Yeah, right, right about there is fine. Okay. So, you know, if you're if you're an arc putter, you're going to have the putter's going to come back a little inside. The head may open up. The face may open up a little bit. You come back there, you square impact, and you release. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the way your stroke would fit your golf swing, okay? So you look at Crenshaw, and, and that's the way he'd, he'd, he'd had ever released. But he was a great speed control putter, you know? Right. I used to, I used to love Ben. You know, he, he'd lip out a 25-footer, and he'd walk halfway to the hole and pound down. And be like, you know, I hit it perfect. You know? <laughs> it's just that thing knocked it out, you know? I, mean, I love it, because that's, that's the way he always thought. It, you know, he always hit the perfect putt. It was just something else caused him not to go in, you know? Now, now, now yourself, what, what, what about yourself? Now, what, what, do you, what is your method? Okay, now, see, I always took the left side of the golf course out of play. And we can so back I you up a little bit more. We can back you up just a step back so I can see. There you okay, go. I want to see you. There you go, Lauren. All right. So, I was, I took the left side of the golf course out of play. So I would have been, would have been a fader. Okay. So I, I always work and because of my body type and stuff, that was the easiest way for me to hit the ball was to take the left side out. Uh, and I would always take the putter straight back and work the heel through. So always trying to keep the face square down the line all the time. That's, that's the way I work because when I hit the shot, I'm always, I was always turning through it. And I never had a big release. I always just kind of held my hands through the shot. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I do with my, my putting stroke. So the way I see the flight of my ball is the same way I'm going to see what I'm trying to do with my putting stroke on the, on the green. So Awesome. Come on back. Thank you so yeah. much. You didn't know you were going to do calisthenics this morning, did you? It's great. I love it. I need it. I've been sitting around for five months. <laughs> that was good stuff. I don't know if you happen to catch this, but Phil Mickelson 
had a play where he putted from about 78 yards at the Memorial uh, from way off. And it was, it was really, really short, but uh -huh. what's the farthest away you, you, you remember putting? Like how, how far away have you been where you've actually putted the ball? Do you remember? Oh, off the green? Anywhere, like anywhere you had, to, yeah, sure, off the green. Uh, gosh. I mean, when will you, when will you try that? I mean, ta you know, talking about maybe some, uh, some links type play. Well, you know, I've I've always chipped the ball. I've never ever really putted from off. I made two or three or four feet off the green, maybe depending on my life. You know, especially I'll go maybe five or six feet off the green if I'm on Bermuda and I got an up upslope. You know, because sometimes you know Bermuda, if you're on an upslope, that grain is running right into you, and it's very easy to just stick that leaf and pitch oh, right yeah. into that grain with a wedge and fat. So, oh yeah. You know, so if I have that kind of a lie, sometimes I'll, I'll putt from off of there. But, you know, putting into the grain, too, you know, slows the ball down. Um, but I, I pretty much like to chip all the time. And I chip, try to chip the same way I try to putt. It's all about speed control. And, and I chip kind of the old-fashioned way. Is, I mean, I'll chip with an 8-iron or whatever. Sure. I've always was taught, and Owen kind of taught me this a little bit, was – Minimum air time, maximum ground time. So I want my chip to roll out like a putt. I figure it's got the best chance of going in if it's rolling up to the hole like a putt, you know. Now, obviously, there's some chips you need to really spin it. You don't have much room to work with, and you got to spin it. you got to hit the flop or something. Right. Uh, I kind of putt the same way I chip. I chip the same way I putt, kind of. Yeah, so. but generally that's your rule of thumb. So yeah, um, I, I, I talked – I just mentioned Lynx Golf, and uh, you're yeah. putting – helped you uh, shoot a back nine 31 in the final round of the 09 uh, senior open at Sunningdale, which was originally scheduled to uh, be in England this week. It's not obvious, but right. what are your recollections of that week and your kind of approach and what allowed you to make that sort of uh, comeback for a, a playoff victory? What do you, what do you, what was your takeaway from that? Well, um, I just remember I was paired. I just, I made the turn and I believe I was paired with Greg Norman in the final group. And I just made the turn and we both didn't play well. I think I was one over in the front nine. He might've been even par one over and just made the turn. And I said, doggone it. I got to just see what I can do to, you know, get going here. Uh, and, uh, I just, uh, I don't know. I just got fired up and made a turn and made, hit a couple of good shots and made some good putts coming in. And I just remember I made a, I made a really clutch birdie on 17, which was, uh, I uh, hit a good, I, I laid up with my rescue off the tee, hit a good seven iron in there, you know, about 10, 12 feet and knocked the putt in. And that was huge. Cause that got me tied for the lead right there and good par on, on 18. Then I had a, you know, had a three way playoff. So, um, you know, I, I've always felt like you, you, you can, a, a good putt, can really rescue you on any hole. You don't, you don't have to hit the perfect shots all the time. And you know me, I, I was, and I'll be first to say this, I was a very average ball striker. But I will say that when you do get it going, you've got to take advantage of it. And a good putt at any time allows you to play with anybody. And I always kind of use this thing in my head, you know, I don't, I don't want the other guys on tour to think I'm so kind of weirdo, but I always use this in my in my head is that okay just get me on the green now you're in my stadium okay that's the way I always thought you know and um as long if I'm on the green I got a chance well I bet you a lot of those guys were thinking the same thing uh in, the, in reverse in reverse <laughs> I'm, I'm in his stadium now yeah. they, they know what they might be in uh, for um, oh god We've got the restart uh, next week with the Ally Challenge in Michigan, mm -hmm. and uh, on the the tour recently announced the creation of a of a Charles Schwab series that's going to have a couple of new tournaments at yes. uh, Big Cedar Lodge in Missouri. Uh -huh. So, are you uh, are you in uh, for those? And what are you thinking about this? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. I, I know I'm gonna play the first one. Uh huh. So I'm definitely gonna play the first one up there. So. So, so how, how exciting to get back and have uh, have something new on the schedule as well. And tell me a little bit about your return. When when will we see you? 
Well, I'm oh, I'm going to come up to the ally, you know. Okay, good. Depending on my test, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I definitely definitely want to go up there. There's a lot of history up there with the Buick being there for so sure. many years, and now Ally has it, and it's, it's it's fun to go back to areas we used to play on the regular tour. Um, will you play uh, a considerable amount in, in returning? Yeah, I mean, how, how much I, are you yeah. going to play? Yeah, I want. Well, I want to play where I can uh, the rest of this year, and I want to play a little bit next year. You know, we'll see. I mean, good. Come on, Vince. I had to file for Medicare this year. I'm going, oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, let's get to that. Let's get to that. It's interesting. Don't worry. I'm right behind you. Don't worry about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, you, turned, you, you turned 65 recently, yeah. and, uh, Lauren, everyone was so concerned about you in 2018 when you had your battle with prostate cancer, and uh -huh. you had yeah. the prostate removed. And, yeah. And I wonder if you can share, you, you know, kind of where you are health-wise and, and kind of – does that enter into your return or do you try to block that out? And, and, and I know you talked about playing maybe till you were 65, but here you are, you seem raring to go, which is good. Well, I am. Yeah, no, I, 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 I like to get out there and see the guys and play some and stuff. Sure. You know, I probably won't play a, any kind of a full schedule later on, but I just want to go out there and play and, and, and just see, and now obviously you know, and most guys would tell you, it's no fun to go out and finish 58th every week, okay? So, you know, I want to go out and just see how I do. Distance is a factor. That's the thing. And then when you get older, you know, I never was a long hitter, but I was always very average, you know. But, um, you know, it's, it's backed off in the last couple of years. So we just got to see how we can go out and, and play, you know. How you feeling? You good? Good. Yeah. No, I feel great. Yeah. Because you look good. great. That's that's the most well, important thank thing. Thank you. Um, well, listen. Before we uh, before we let you go, uh, the top players in the world are headed really near you at uh, to Memphis, the TPC Southwind. Yeah. Week for the right FedEx St. Jude um, Invitational. So as they're gathering there, when you watch golf, and I know you're a golf fan like the rest of us. Oh who, yeah. Who do you who do you think is the top putter in the game today? I mean, who do you see out there? You go, wow, this guy's this guy's really good. Oh. You got a few of them. Yeah, you know, it, it depends on. To me, top putters are guys that can make them when they really have to. You know, I, I always felt like the guys that that, and, and this is where I always thought Tiger was so dominant. You know, and everybody obviously Tiger is a great driver, a great iron player. I mean, his game was the top. But what I thought Tiger was always so good at was making the putts for pars. And I've always felt like when you're in contention, you're on that back nine coming down the stretch, you're probably going to have two putts in that, you know, six to eight foot range for par that generally, because you know, you're just not going to hit perfect shots in every hole. Even when you're down the stretch, you're in the lead. So, if you make both of those putts for pars, you're going to probably win. And Tiger was the best I've ever seen at making putts for pars under pressure. You remember, I mean, he was winning Pebble Beach by 12 or 13 shots, remember? And, and he comes down on 16 and makes about a 12, 15 footer for par there. And he just fist pumping because he's still grinding, he man. Had that big, he could have finished double, double, double and still won by six, you know? But yeah. he just he just wanted to make that putt for par, and and I think the best part is I see the guys that can make those putts for pars on the back nine, those two three putts, those two or three putts they got to make in that six to eight foot range for pars. That that sure. determines. Who so you're so be. in your career, who who was that guy when you were like, oh, he's going to make this? You know, he's got he's got that type of putter. He's got a couple of those. I mean, that you just assumed he was going to. Who's it? Who's a really like a bulldog when it comes to that? Oh, uh, you know. You know, Maybe somebody I, we don't know think of right away. You know, I, I, how, how about this name? I thought I thought Zach Johnson was really a, a good – okay, because, you know, if you're talking about length and all that, you know, to me, two majors, I mean, got a lot out of him, and, and he just knew how to play the wedges. He had the great wedge game. He just sure. played his – he played his game, and he's a winner. You know, yeah. I thought he was a great, great putter in the in that short range because he was a good wedge player and in that short range and inside that 10, 15 feet, he was really good. 
That's what I thought. Yeah, so you talked about distance before I let you go. So if you lined it up against uh, DeChambeau and you guys are both hitting uh, – <laughs> <laughs> how, how intimidating is that? You, think, well, come you may on. not. You may talk to him twice, three times around, maybe. Yeah. What, what did not he, see what him? Did he hit it at, at Memorial off the first tee. What did he hit it? Four thirty-two or something off the first tee or something. <laughs> is it hard to fathom? Is it? Is it? Sure, he didn't. He didn't. He'd have to chip back to some of the par fours in the old days, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, it's great to visit. Lauren, really, and uh, thank you for your time, and I look sure forward is. to seeing you out there, and, and best of luck on PGA Tour Champions. Thanks, Vince. I appreciate you calling me.